Hi, this is Scon7125. Thank you for tuning in. This video is just going to explain three things that I had to do to my Prusa Mini to get it to work with non-Prusa filament mainly. Um, I also was have start beginning to having problems with Prusa filament as well, getting stuck in the machine, uh, where every print I had to take apart the entire machine uh, and physically pull the filament out of the head and put it back in because it was being eaten and I was also having a major uh, over extrusion problem. So these are the three things that I had to do to get that working. Uh, I'm brand new to 3D printing so if you see me doing something that's off or not quite right please let me know in the comments below and if you like the video please like and subscribe. Have a good one. So the first thing I had to do on my Prusa Mini was I noticed that the heating element, the extrusion head, had actually slipped out of the machine a little bit. So if you see, there's a large gap right there in between the uh, heating element and the actual extrusion head. So what I had to do was loosen those three screws that are on the side of the uh, heating element right there and physically push the heating head back up into the machine. You're about to see me do it. So uh, you need to take your filament out of the machine first. You cannot do this with filament in the machine because if there's filament in the machine it's just going to push the head back down. So what I did here was loosen the three bolts. If they're stripped you're going to need to get them replaced. Um, but mine were not thankfully and I was able to do that and just push that back up. There is a uh, Bowsen tube inside of the heating head. So if you're finding that this is uh, impossible to do, you need to take the top of the heating element off and trim down that tube. I'd already done that before the video. Um, this is just a tutorial to show what I did to get it working. So once those three screws are very tight, uh, because remember this is going to heat up and cool down and heat up and cool down, that can cause those screws to turn out. Um, I might put thread lock on them later. Uh, if, if this problem persists, I don't know why they didn't have thread lock on them to begin with, but um, anything that heats up and cools down and shakes like that should probably have some sort of thread locker on it. The second thing I had to do was this screw in the back of the extruder, I guess you would call it, was way too tight. Even for Prusa filament, it was eating every filament I put through the machine. So whoever put this together did it in a very big hurry and just over tightened that. So I suggest that everyone, regardless of if it's working or not, make sure to adjust this screw. Um, it says in the pamphlet to make it even with the edge of the casing. I actually had to back mine out a little bit more so it's sticking out with no filament in. When you put filament in the machine, it's going to bind down that screw and it's going to push it into the machine. So if you have filament in the machine and you see it's really far in there, that's probably okay. Just back it out until it becomes really loose and then slowly bring it back in to where there's just a little bit of tension on there. That's the second thing I had to do. The third thing I had to do to get my Prusa Mini to work with other filaments is per project, this is every Every slice that you that you send to your USB, you need to make sure that the filament is correct. So oh, if we come to platter, go to filament settings right here, and then go to filament, that should be the one that's automatically selected. Then we'll you'll need to select generic PLA from here, or whatever you're using, and not the Prusa Mint, the generic. And what that'll do is if I select this, I'm just gonna discard this. If I select it, it's going to reset the temperatures. This is this is what I had to, to reset. So every single filament that I use is a different temperature range. So you have to set these temperatures to what the filament you're using. And yes, if you're using a different filament, you have to change it in this and resend it to your USB drive. This is something that you have to plan for ahead of time. And so usually I will up this, the first layer will be 10 instead of five. I usually do 10 degrees Celsius hotter on the first layer than the seconds. Always make sure that this is within your, your range of your filament, uh, because if it's not, you're going to get over extrusion and you're gonna get some leaking 
problems out of the head. So that was the third thing that I had to do. So those are three things that I had to do to get my Prusa Mini working. Um, and it's been reliable ever since. I've done about 30 prints on it so far, and it works. it's worked flawlessly. I haven't had to yank uh, filament out or change anything on the head since. So I hope this helps uh, at least somebody out there that has a Prusa Mini and is uh, having issues with, with filament being either eaten by the machine or over extruding. Um, I know a lot of people think that Prusa did this to make you use Prusa filament, and I'm here to say that that is completely false. Um, you can use non-Prusa filament in the machines. It just takes some TLC, and I think that's with almost every 3D printer. Uh, I was on the market for a very long time looking for a 3D printer, and uh, my boyfriend actually got this for me. So um, thank you to him. Uh, I wouldn't be 3D printing without him. Um, and it's a great machine. It, it has worked flawlessly since I did those small repairs. Uh, and I've used uh, PETG and PLA uh, both, and both of them have worked spectacularly. So if you like this video, please uh, uh, like and subscribe. Um, if you have any comments, please leave them below. I am open to criticism because, like I said, I'm brand new at this. Um, and I want to get better. So if you are a 3D printer, please uh, let me know what I'm doing wrong. Have a good day.